Number 36, determine the percent water in copper 2 sulfate uh, pentahydrate, aka CuSO4 5H2O. And we need to do this in three significant figures, aka three sig figs. And that's it. Yeah, no, no, no numbers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so how are we going to do this? I don't know. So, uh, guys, thanks for tuning in and, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel. Just kidding. I got you guys. Let's do this. So, we need to find a percent, right? So, a percent of anything, remember, we learned this in math class, right? Percent of anything is just a part divided by a whole and then just multiplied by 100. That's basically what this is here, but we just need to, you know, give a little bit more information. Now, they're asking us to find the percent of water in this whole entire compound. So the part that we're, you're searching for is the water, right? And the whole is the entire compound. So let's just write this a little bit better. Still, it's the same exact idea, though. We're still trying to find out the percent now of water, and we know that water is H2O. So we just need to find out what the amount of the water is and divide that by the total amount, right? And specifically, it's the amount of the compound. It's the CuSO4 pentahydrate. The 5H2Os have to be included here. Okay, so maybe let's see if I can scoop this up, make this a little nicer, right? And then all we got to do, since it's a percent, it's just multiplied by 100. So where's the numbers coming from? The periodic table, right? This is just taking your molar masses. In order to find out a percent, we could always get a percent from the molar masses. So in this case, I have to find out the total mass of water and the total molar mass. So let's get started. I'm going to write the compound over here, CuSO4. This dot has nothing to do with, uh, you know, multiplying anything with the molar mass. This is just meaning that it's a hydrate. Okay, that means that, you know, this is included with five waters. Okay, so since they want us to find the amount of H2O, I'm going to group all of the waters together in one of my components when I find out the molar mass. But everything else I will uh, list out separately. So what do we have here? I probably should give myself a little bit more room just because there's a lot of individual elements. We have copper, we have sulfur, and we have this oxygen. Now keep in mind, this oxygen is not included in the water oxygen. They're two totally different oxygens. We want to find out the water, and then this is by its, its own self. Then I'm going to group together all of the waters. Okay, so let's list them all out. So I got copper, I got sulfur, I got oxygen, that's these three in red, and now I'm going to group together all of the waters, and that's the blue. Okay, the next thing is we're just going to say how many we have of each. So how many coppers, how many sulfurs, how many oxygens, and how many waters in my, my uh, equation right here? Well, let's start. Let's go from left to right. Copper, I don't see a number here, right? There was no two or three, right? There was a secret one here, so I have only one copper. The same thing goes for the sulfur, right? There was no number here, right? Two or three, so there's a secret one. That means that I have one sulfur, but there's a number. For the oxygen, there's a four. So that means that there are four oxygens. Now, how many waters are here? This whole thing is the water, right? I can't count that two as anything because the two is included in the water. But this five is telling me that there are five waters. So that's the number that goes here. Now, just like for any molar mass, all we got to do is just multiply each one of these by the molar mass on the periodic table of what was said. So let's start from the top, work our way to the bottom. Your molar mass doesn't exactly have to match mine. It's just got to be very, very, very close. 
So I'm going to use the exact numbers. You can round, do whatever you got to do. But we should get the similar numbers at the end. So for uh, copper, Cu, on my periodic table, it's 63.55. Uh, and let me just make this the same color. So we have 63.55. And just the unit for any molar mass is always grams per mole. So I'll just keep that there. I have sulfur. I look on the periodic table. It's on 6A or 16, the group. So 32.06 on mine, grams per mole. Oxygen on my periodic table is just 16. And now here comes a little bit of a challenge. What's the molar mass of this component, right? Now, we're going to have to do a formula inside of a formula. That's always fun. But it's nothing that you guys can't handle. I know you guys got this. So we have to find out the whole uh, molar mass of H2O. So I have two hydrogens in here and I have one oxygen, right? So I have two hydrogens. Each hydrogen on the periodic table is 1.008. And I'm going to add that with one oxygen, which is 16.00. This whole thing is the weight of H2O. Can you see that, guys? There's two hydrogens, so this is H2, plus 1O, so H2O. So let's just do that math first, just so that we get the, the one number. 2 times 1.008 plus 16, I get 18.016. So what I'm going to do, pause the video if you need to write this down, but I'm just going to erase this and put the regular number of 18.016. 016, and that's grams per mole. And maybe I will just, you know, group this together and say that this was H2O. Okay. Now all I got to do is just multiply what I said, right? So let's do it. 1 times 63.55 is 63.55, and that's the grams per mole of the copper. The sulfur, 1 times 32.06 is 32.06, and that's grams per mole of just the sulfur. 4 times 16 is 64, so 64.00 grams per mole of the oxygen. And then 5 times 18.016, I get 90.08, and that's grams per mole of the water. So now I have the component of the total amount of water. I need to find out what the total molar mass is. But we know that, guys, right? Whenever we get the total number of each individual component, all you have to do is just add up those numbers, and you will get the total molar mass. So I'm going to do the 63.55 plus the 32.06 plus the 64 plus the 90.08 and we get a whole molar mass, the total, the total thing of 249.69, and that's grams per mole. And this is the total molar mass. Okay, let's find out that percent water. Percent water equals the amount of water, the total amount of water, which we said was right here. It's the 90.08, right? So it's 90.08 divided by the total molar mass of the whole compound, which was 249.69. When I do my math, I don't like to put any units in here. I just want I just like to make sure that I have the right units and then I know that I don't have to put the units in the, the formulas. And this is times by 100. All right. Coming down to it, guys, percent of water. Let's see, 90.08 divided by 249.69, and then I times that by 100. And they said three sig figs, so it was 36.07. However, this 7 tells me that that 0 has to be rounded up. So it's 36.1%. And that is your final answer. So that means that... Actually, that's an ugly, that's an ugly color. Percent of H2O, that means that there's 36.1% out of all 
the whole the whole thing is 36.1 percent water and that's it all right guys what do you think hopefully this helped let me know in the comments please give this video a thumbs up just to let me know that i've done my job right you know teaching you how to do percent comp percent composition and subscribe to the channel if you like thank you thank you thank you so much you guys are awesome let's keep studying hard and i'll see you in the next lesson have an awesome day